All right, should be good to go. I wish we had some, you know, fancy elevator background music. <laughs> you are alive, you know that. Oh. How do you get the notification <laughs> that said we went live? Sorry. Well, it's not your face, but oh. <laughs> it's the Ask the Agent screen. <laughs> I didn't. I thought you're you were good. I live music. I can. I can play. I like the live music. It's a new vibe. We're gonna let a couple people pop in here, um, while we get ready, and give it a minute. And then, uh, yeah, we do need some fancy background music. I can. Uh, I can play Alexa and have her play fancy live music okay. yeah except for the yeah. fact that we'll probably then uh so we need a theme song is what you're saying yeah we need a theme song if anybody out there is listening and you'd like to write a theme song for us we'll totally take you up on that offer if we play some someone's existing song i guess that's copyright and we have to like pay for it yeah pretty much uh, exactly yeah. um we got Few people on right now watching us. Hopefully a couple more people join us in a second. Anybody out there is listening and you'd like to write. There's me again. Sorry. An echo. It's fine. I was trying to share it to some pages real quick too. What? None of our fellow uh, Welsh team people have joined us yet. Hi, Eddie. Thanks for joining oh, us. Tell people to go live. Oh, you did. I did. We got a couple of people here now. <laughs> no we're not we're not bored oh you know we know a composer already it's not that hard what we have a composer in our oh. team true we just need to get him to do it that's right nathan if you're out there and you're listening you can compose for us okay I'm going to stop sharing for a second so everyone can see your lovely face. Hey, everybody. It is September 2nd, and George and I are here for our local market update. And I promise, I say this every week, but I really promise we're going to try and keep it brief this week and be done by 4 o'clock. Um, so i am going to hi oh we got a couple more people on good to see you so let's jump right in this is our weekly september 2nd ask the agent we'll go back to our screen share and we shall begin let me present mode this okay if anybody has any questions as always this is supposed to be an interactive environment so we welcome live question. Weekly housing market, not a ton of, oh look, I just have to backtrack a second. Nathan said he would compose us some music. So next week, everybody, or maybe we'll give him two weeks to get on top of that. We'll have our own lovely background music. So um, this week, more of the same, uh, you know, every week we get in here and we say, I don't have enough inventory. We don't have enough inventory. And we're still selling more homes. More homes are going under contract and new listings are being put on the market. And that is no different. The big difference this week is that we closed out more homes, 200 plus more homes um, than the previous weeks. We were in the 500s for a while, as you guys can see that. And this week we jumped to closing out 736 homes. So um, I personally think that that has a lot to school going back in session. And George, what say you? No, 100%. I mean, you got everybody that's trying to make that last minute rush to get into their school district mm -hmm. or the new school district right before school starts so that, you know, the kids can go in fresh 
typically we see that mid-August because that's when schools typically start. Yep. But that's right. You know, everybody kind of pushed back a little bit. So we are here in September, the week before Labor Day, right? And school started. It's great. It's great. I know a lot of people are happy that school's back in session. So knock on wood, no bad news yet. All right, moving forward. Month over month, we did this a little bit last week, but we had a couple more days left in August. And we know that there are lots of sales that always occur on the last Friday of the month, closing out that month. And this was no different. So highlighting, you know, sold homes, we are neck and neck. You know, everybody is asking, you know, is it a seller's market? Is it a buyer's market? Is now a good time to sell? What if I want to put my home in the market? Is there a home to buy? I mean, if you look at where we are, yes, our inventory levels are low. They are lower than they were last year at this time, but not a ton. It's the pending sales that are huge gap. I mean, 300 or 3,055 homes in August went under contract versus in in this August, 3902. I mean, that's a massive jump. That means that if you're putting your home on the market, you pretty much are getting an offer and putting it under contract. Um, two categories that I don't normally talk about, we don't normally include when we look at our month over month stats are expired homes. So that would be a home that went on the market and it, it lasted the entire listing length and never sold or which is different than withdrawn so and then an extended home so maybe you had a six month listing agreement it didn't go under contract and you agreed to continue your listing agreement with your current agent which interestingly enough both of those category numbers are lower so for me looking at it on the surface and i love george's opinion you know, we have less expired homes, which should translate into some of those are the ones that are going pending, which that pending number is way high compared to where it was last year. And then we have less homes that have extended because again, they're going under contract. I don't think that it is because they're being withdrawn and taken back off the market because those numbers don't match up. That's not what the data is telling us. We're, this data should be telling us that those properties didn't need to be extended because they were sold, they went under contract and sold. What do you think, George? I agree 100%. I mean, uh, clear that if you put a home on the market, it is going to sell. You just give it that standard amount of time. Uh, depending on your area, it's going to vary, whether it's a 30-day time frame or if it's a 90-day time frame. Mm -hmm. uh, somewhere in between, those homes are going to sell, so you don't have to worry about uh, just putting your house on the market and not getting a buyer for it. Eventually, you do. Hence the reason why pending sales is going up and hence the reason why the number of extensions on your current listing agreements out there uh, are not being done because there is no need to. Uh, right. In, you know, period of six months uh, at, with this time frame, you're pretty much on market, under contract and closed well within that time frame. Mm -hmm. You are. And we're seeing it, you know, week after week, month over month pretty much since April. So let's go to, this is average pricing for August, 2020. So average list price, 269. And this is across the entire MLS. So this isn't segmented out by, you know, the beach versus Mandarin versus Orange Park, Fleming Island. This is all, everything in the MLS that is a residential, whether that's single family, townhouse, condo, land for sale, and residential income property. So no commercial. Uh, average list price 269087 in the last eight years. That's the highest listing price I've seen by far. I think 252 was the MLS average last year. So, I mean, that's a steep number. Mm -hmm. Average sold price, wow. I mean, 307, that's incredible, which means that some of those higher priced home category, well, one, you know, it could be those higher priced homes that market is moving quicker, which we know that it is. You know, homes that are selling aren't limited just to homes in the 250, 300,000 mark. They are 
across all boards, you know, that luxury level upper price point inventory is moving to. Um, but it also is an indication that those prices continue to get pushed up. So you might list at 269, let's say that's the average, but we're still multiple offers, raising prices, people getting into bidding wars, and that average sold price is ticking up. Make sense? It definitely does. I mean, and, and one thing you uh, would have to figure out right now is that the, uh, we talked about a few weeks back, the people that were in tough issues as far as financially goes, were at the lower point of the market or they were looking at those 150, 200,000 and under price point. Mm -hmm. uh, people that were 300, 400, 500 and above were not hurting as much in regards to their employment or their financial status. And hence the reason they were making more changes whether it be upgrading their homes, uh, making changes to the area, trying to get a bigger backyard, whatever it might be. So those are the homes that are selling now. Yep, that's right. All those DIYers are getting everything. They've gotten everything ready. They're ready to go. Mm -hmm. All right. And then active listings. We talked a little bit last week about how active listings were under 7,000 for the first time in forever. Um, you know, we're seeing over the month of August, the 8691 homes were active on the market, active in range right now, and um, 3,162 sold. So that sold number we talked about on our last, last slide uh, is just a little bit less than where we were at last year, but overall our sales are exceeding, uh, exceeding the market by between 20 to 25% depending on what category you might be looking at. Mm -hmm. So last week I mentioned that I wanted to dive into something that I think is unique to our marketplace a little bit uh, with what's happening with vacation rentals. And so vacation rentals have been um, a hot topic about, you know, Airbnb has new requirements for cleanliness. People might be more inclined to travel domestically and that's, you know, that is exactly what we are seeing confirmed in North Florida. So the, um, the long-term housing market or the long-term rental market, we get a lot of questions from our investors about, should I sell my long-term rental? Because maybe my tenant isn't paying and they were given, you know, leniency on paying that based on COVID. And now they're looking at a situation where those investors that are holding on to those long-term rentals are thinking maybe now's the time to sell. Well, is that the same in the short-term rental market? And based on what I've been able to dig up in a small amount of time, I don't think so. I think that our short-term vacation rental property owners have experienced, I would say since about June, you know, there was definitely a dip in their occupancy rates. And part of that was because of the state of Florida you were not allowed to have Airbnb, VRBO, home away vacation rentals happening for a while. Um, but now they're back up to 95% plus occupancy rates. And we are very fortunate in that we live in a very travel, driving travel friendly state. You know, there's a lot of domestic vacations that can happen in the state of Florida where if we're not able to fly around the world or even people be comfortable leaving the state, what can they do that's close to home? And we have tons of beaches, tons of parks, tons of outdoor activities, and that has really kept those vacation rental owners in business. Um, you know, George, I know that your family, you guys booked a vacation rental, didn't you? And experience, you know, you switched your vacation plans up because that made more sense for you. And I'm sure you've heard of other people as well. And while you chat, I'm going to share some, I'm going to go to another screen to share. Well, that's, uh, that is, I mean, really at this time of year, when most people were taking trips to Disney, Universal, SeaWorld, those types of places, realizing they, nobody wants to be sitting in those crowds anymore, mm -hmm. uh, the concerns uh, that they may have and, and valid concerns. They made those trips, uh, going on short vacation trips to the beach, to the lake, to pretty much any other parts of town just to get a different feel. We went out to the beach out in Panama City uh, to got a vacation rental, uh, one street off the beach, 
with a pool house. I mean, it was perfect. We didn't really have to leave anywhere other than to go grab some food uh, once in a while. Uh, I know friends that had one down at Volano Beach. I know people that have gone all over the state of Florida just to say, hey, this is our vacation. We're going to take a short uh, week, weekend, uh, four days, something like that to kind of have uh, a little bit of time with family or friends uh, combined just to be all out there. And I think that's a phenomenal opportunity for people to do that. And we're going to continue to see that not just here in the state of Florida, but I feel like that's going to continue throughout the country, whether the lakes in Georgia, going out to hunting in Tennessee, wherever it might be. So vacation rentals are probably going to be uh, very, very popular over the next year to two years. Um, and I think people are going to see the value of it and continue to do so. Absolutely. I've just been sharing a couple of things um, while you were chatting. And um, while, while we're talking about this, I know you guys can't see this super well, so I'll try to interpret. But this is a, uh-oh, it just went away. It's reloading, I think. This, this is a website that I use, AirDNA. They compile a lot of vacation rental data across internationally. And so up here, there's a little heat map. And you can see if you click on here, so here's the US, um, the revenue change July, this, is, this was done at the beginning of August, August 4th. So we don't have August data yet, which I think August data is gonna be way higher than even what July was because people really, I think, tried to cram in their last minute summer vacations mm -hmm. before school started in the month of August. And you, you know, people may have been holding out, like maybe we'll still get to do what we had originally planned for and they finally decided to scrap it you know, and do something locally and maybe stay at one of these um, vacation rental properties. But if you look at this heat map, you know, you've got um, monthly revenue change way up for here. In other parts of the world, I mean, tremendous. Like if you go over to Europe, um, 136% in France, you know, so AirDNA is a great site that I like to use. Um, for our purposes, you know, I did a very informal poll of some Jack's Beach vacation rental owners and got extremely positive feedback that tracks higher than what these numbers are. Um, but if you look over here, so back in February, pre-COVID days, um, you've got over a million active properties. Now, total, all the way down through August 2nd, down to 850K. So that's, you know, a 200,000 plus swing in active properties. We could probably attribute that to people that operated, um, you know, in states that maybe still have restrictions on what you can do with vacation rentals or people that cannot, um, they can't rent out a portion of their home anymore. So here we have a lot of homeowners who own properties that are solely function as a vacation rental home. And I think that that's really a huge plus because we're not worried about strangers coming into our house because we don't live there as well. So these are strictly operated as vacation rentals and vacation rentals only. Um, you can see how bookings fluctuated over, um, over the past several months. So here's an interesting trend line. You know, we went up you know, into the middle of the summer. And then, in, you know, we, we came back down again. And that, if you remember that end of June, beginning of July, that's when the country had some spiking levels and city governments got a little bit tighter on what their restrictions are in certain areas of the country as well. So those numbers have fluctuated, but all in all, 413,000 new bookings as compared to back pre-COVID, you're looking at 347,000. So those numbers are up. You know, people are traveling domestically and for us in our beaches, our areas, you know, like Riverside, Avondale, those nice walkable areas of town, um, that has really been an economic plus. Average daily rate holding its own over COVID. And look at it, average daily rate has increased since last year. So the purple line is 2019. And then this orangey red line, that's 2020. So people are getting more money for their vacation rentals these days, even though we know occupancy, um, the occupancy rate has trended down. So you can see up here, and, but this isn't whole nationwide. This isn't just Jacksonville, Florida. So this is a great site. I encourage you guys, if you operate a vacation rental, if you're thinking about getting into investing in one of those types of properties, this is one of the sites that I really enjoy uh, 
poking around and you can find some very specific market data, but I didn't want to go. I just wanted to give you guys a nice overview today. And then vacation rentals, and this is new bookings globally. So I'll scroll up a little bit here. Check out this headline, global bookings rebound 127%. I mean, that's globally. So that's incredible. We in North America, we're here in the blue. And you can see where we were all the way over here in the beginning of February to where we are now. So amazing. US in the headlines again here. And this is great for our beach community. This really is. We have so many miles of beach line from Amelia Island all the way down to Palm Coast. And there's a lot of people that depend on, on that income. Plus, we have a lot of people, um, healthcare, you know, healthcare travel. So we have a lot of hospitals here that people travel for. They really need a safe place to stay when they're here for treatments. And sometimes they're here for a month of two, you know, a month or two at a time. And, you know, in May, the San Pablo area, the beach area is a very popular area for vacation rentals for people that are visiting Mayo Hospital. Likewise, you know, same thing happens when you go downtown to the Riverside area um, where you've got St. Vincent's there as well. So, you know, and MD Anderson and Nemours, and there's just, you know, we're a healthcare hub. And we've seen that trend over and over again as being one of the things that has kept us moving in a time of uncertainty, kept our housing market moving. And um, Relo is something that I know George and his team are seeing a ton of, whether that's business Relo or nurses. We've seen a lot of nurses lately. Um, and if there's anything, you know, I've kind of been droning on here for a while, but I do want to wrap it up. But George, is there anything that stood out to you while I was chatting that you'd like to add into that vacation rental mix? No, I mean, it's, it's a great point. We did have a couple of great questions that popped up. Uh, one from Fergus saying, could a buyer use a property manager for holiday rentals in the same way they use for long-term rentals? Mm -hmm. Great. And yes, absolutely. There, there are several businesses strictly that all, that's all they focus on is vacation rentals. So uh, we have a couple. Uh, I have personally have had a buyer of mine who purchased a property for a vacation rental, uh, work with one here locally in the St. Augustine area and has been a great service. Uh, and especially if you're not local or you're not going to be here with all the extra requirements that have been put in with some of these vacation rentals. Right. It's very, very helpful to have a team of individuals that can coordinate and uh, quickly turn uh, some of these homes around in order to get them back out on uh, rent. Cause I, I know when I was, uh, we were on in Panama city beach, we had a home across the street. We saw the, we, we talked to the people, we hung out with them for a little bit. Um, they were leaving that evening. Uh, you saw the crew of cleaners come in uh, mm -hmm. within an hour or two of them leaving. And the very next morning there was a whole new set of cars there. So yep. they had to probably turn around and back out on rent. Uh, yep. to a, group or a day a week whatever it might be so uh churning out these uh, vacation rentals is very very easy at this time because people are leaving um one thing to add of course because of the fact that we you had schools get pushed back you had a lot more people saying hey we've got two weeks a week extra 10 days let's take another trip <laughs> uh, take a quick trip somewhere else and if it was right. five to six hour driving distance they they did it right yeah that's what we did you know yeah uh, Ability the the plan we came up a couple of weeks before uh, when we heard school was being moved out. Like, came up with the plan. Yeah. City. Everyone wants to get out of their own house and go visit somebody else's house. Yeah, you got an extra extra couple of weeks of summer. Yeah, make use of it. So, and then you know, there's a lot of there are a lot of local property managers that can manage just vacation rentals, and then there are some national companies out there. If you guys want some names, uh, feel free to. Ooh, I just threw something at myself. Feel free to um, reach out to me. I'm happy to share that information with you guys as well. Um, there, Christina asked, are there restrictions for area and VRBOs? Yes, absolutely. There are, um, each of the cities sometimes have their own restrictions and different condo buildings have restrictions as well. So if you are contemplating purchasing a vacation rental, you will definitely want to partner with an agent who can help you figure out which works best for you. Some of the cities have 30 day minimums. Some areas of towns have seven day rental periods. The state of Florida has been legislating this for a while. So um, yes, 
The short answer is yes, there are different restrictions. Please partner with somebody who can help you figure out what's best for you. Um, and yeah, Tamara just booked a vacation rental for this fall. It is an excellent option. Um, so that is it for us this week, unless we have any other burning questions out there. No, look, it's four o'clock. I'm so proud. We are wrapping up. That's all for September 2nd. This is George. This is Kelly. George is with me. I can be Kelly if you want. You can be Kelly. All right. You get to have long hair next week. We'll see you again next week. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Maybe bye. <laughs>